The National Archives is in possession of thousands of email from Joe's time as VP, where he apparently, as Sean has reported, used a pseudonym. Lots of different names. With burner email accounts, one a government account, others Gmail accounts, and used them to communicate frequently with Hunter, CC him on things. But it was about official government business oftentimes. But that's not all. According to American First Legal, Hunter's firm, Rosemont Seneca, get this one, this is new, exchanged over a thousand emails. So Hunter's firm exchanged over a thousand emails with Joe Biden's vice presidential office through official email traffic. So what's going on here? Simple question. We'll see if there's a simple answer. Let's bring in Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett and former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Uh, Greg, I, the, you know, the emails are the names are Robert L. Peters and Robin Ware and J.R.B. Ware reminds me of Carlos Danger and Pierre Delecto, except this <laughs> is a lot more significant because it's the president and vice president of the United States with foreign entities. He told us he knew nothing about it. And day after day after day, we see how intertwined it is, Greg. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Five thousand four hundred alias emails under fake accounts. I mean, that's a staggering number. Just do the math. That's almost two of these clandestine emails a day during his vice presidency. Uh, so, you know, why was Joe Biden doing it? Well, Occam's razor tells us the obvious answer, usually the correct one. In this case, it's concealment. If somebody has nothing to hide, they don't hide their communications, but people who engage in improper, if not illegal, activities, cloak them in a shroud of darkness. They try to obscure their illicit behavior, and that's what Joe Biden was doing. Here, Hunter was being copied on his dad's secretive emails that dealt directly with Ukraine, where the son was pocketing a million dollars per year. And some of the shared communications were with then-President Poroshenko, whom Joe pressured to fire the prosecutor who was investigating Hunter Biden and his company, Burisma. So, you know, these alias emails, Pete, are only solidifying Joe's direct involvement in his son's schemes. It strikes me, too, Pam, that like a lot of this information, if it involves high level interactions with government officials, would have some level of classification, at which point Hunter didn't have one but worked for different firms. Uh, how... I mean, you can connect the dots now with a crayon. Um, when, yeah. when does it really cascade into something meaningful in your mind? I mean, it's already meaningful with the evidence we have, but it is something that really moves. Yeah, it is. It is. It is, Pete. And I think it's so important to know that I believe that an impeachment inquiry is imminent regarding Joe Biden. And here's why. James Comer and the House Oversight Committee, they need subpoena power. And now, more than ever, they yeah. need subpoena power. And these emails are critical to the House's investigation. And they're not giving them up. They're, they're making all these ridiculous claims. Some of them, they're claiming executive privilege. What about that, when they threw executive privilege out the window to go after President Trump, yet they're claiming it on some of these emails now? So the House Oversight Committee has to have subpoena power. And to connect it with crayons, let's keep going. Fifteen trips Hunter Biden took to foreign companies on Air Force Two, bank transfers to 20 shell companies, to nine Biden family members. This has got to be investigated, and the House Oversight Committee has to have the authority to do so. And the only way they can get that authority is by an impeachment inquiry. So that, I believe, is so soon to come. Greg, makes sense. I mean, if you've got these all these bank accounts, scores of LLCs going to different... Could a impeachment inquiry truly have the subpoena power necessary to get to the bank records? That's where the money actually went from whom. Would they? Is that why it's so powerful? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I would actually recommend a select committee, uh, which is sort of the apex of subpoena authority under the Nixon standard during Watergate uh, cases that... You know, Nixon tried to stonewall, and eventually the courts, including the Supreme Court, said, no, you can't, not with a select committee involving, you know, illegal activities and a pending impeachment. So I do think that's where it's heading. There are some moderates who are a bit reluctant. I think this effort at a snap impeachment 
without any committee hearings is a mistake. And that's what Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi did in the second Trump impeachment. Um, yep. you know, two wrongs don't make a right. I think they need to methodically gather the evidence, show it to the American people before they actually move toward an impeachment. But I agree. I think we're getting closer and closer to it. Pam, what do you think of that? And, and do you think we could get to the point, because he there's some hesitation amongst moderate House Republicans, oh, I'm in a district that went, do, don't you think it could create a moment where even Senate Democrats and moderate Republicans in the Senate might say, like, this is just sheer Ill illegality? Sure. I, I don't know how someone like Joe Manchin doesn't agree to this as well. Absolutely. You, you have to look at this. And again, this is there is so much evidence, Pete, that is out there. And remember, Joe Biden yeah, said, I had no contact with my son regarding foreign business dealings. And James Comer has said he has seen one of those emails that was forwarded to Hunter directly referencing Ukraine. Exactly. It's outrageous. It's right there. It is. Uh, Greg and Pam, keep us updated. Thank you very much. Uh hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.